Hey guys, it's Leah Virgin, your Christian coach, mentor, prayer warrior, and writer at BurstingWithBlessings.com. And today is Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and I hope you guys are having a blessed day. It's been rather interesting here. <laughs> uh, I woke up this morning, and I was making the bed up, and as I was making it up, I... I, you know, I was making it really nice. I even thought about, you know, getting out all the pillows, which is normally what I do. I feel very, um, I feel very strongly that when we start our mornings right with certain activities, it helps to boost our whole day, right? <clears throat> We've got a sense of accomplishment right away. And I made the bed and I was going to like, you know, put the pillows on and like make it nice and tight. And my dog loves to, A, my dog sleeps with me. Okay, my dog is 15 pounds and he is my baby. It is, it's true. I, I'm that person. I used to only have like big dogs many, many, many years ago. And um, my dog is a rescue uh, off the streets. So he is a, a Jack Russell um, Chihuahua mix. We think, we think he looks like that. Some sort of terrier, you know, Chihuahua mix. And, uh, and he is like, as soon as he was given to me by my, my neighbor, uh, I was like, this is my baby. It's my gift from God. Totally my gift from God. Like this dog and I are mm, my Ovi, my Ovi. And yes, he's named after Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals. Okay, so I like to say he's the real OV pup. <laughs> my husband named him. Uh, my husband was not too, too keen about the fact that I was getting a dog. He was like, I really don't want to do this, but I love you. <laughs> uh, and then he's like, wait, the dog is now sleeping in bed with us? This is years ago because I've had oves now for, uh, gosh, years. Years. And I'm like, yep, dog sleeping with me. You went away on a business trip. This was years ago when we were living in Texas. And I was like, and I was lonely and I was scared. <laughs> so now the dog sleeps with us and my dog will sleep like half on my head. And I get up pretty early so that I can teach, um, you know, and yes, yeah, so I teach for VIP kid. I do lots of the things. I do lots of the things to make our life work, right? Um, and, <laughs> and my dog will get up, go to the bathroom, come back in, you know, while I'm making my coffee and go and run right back to the bed, get in the bed and go back to sleep. <laughs> so I typically take pictures of him in the morning to say good morning to you guys because someone's still in bed, but it isn't me. <laughs> I'm typically up by 5.30 or 6, depending on my class schedule, depending on what's gotten booked. Um, and and I was like, oh, I shouldn't make it all the way up. So I, like, turned down half the bed where he normally sleeps on my pillow. I, like, turned it down. And I, like, walk, started walking away from it. I was like, okay, Leah, that's just weird. Okay, let's just all, <laughs> let's just all say that's a little weird. All right? I made the bed and then made it specifically so that my dog could go back to bed, right? That's the love of an animal, is that you will make the bed so that your dog can go back to bed after you have gotten out of bed. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm not making hospital corners anymore, and I'm certainly not going to bounce a quarter off my bed because my dog's going to, like, and if I don't do that, he will pull the sheets back so that he can get back in and if it's winter he's gonna burrow under the sheets now praise jesus the air conditioner is fixed can everybody say praise you jesus thank you jesus for the man that came last night found the wire that was burnt out and i mean hashtag first world problems i get it you guys i i mean don't slay me, but we, it was in my house. It was almost 90 degrees last night. Tea time. Mm. And I just, 
And I don't even often like live off of anything with a ton of ice in it. I had ice in my drinks. I had ice in my, in the dogs bowls. You know, the dogs were like splayed out on the kitchen, you know, slab. Uh, we had every fan on. My sister-in-law was like, do you want our, you know, window AC unit, which we tried to put in. And then we were like, well, maybe we'll wait and see if the guy can fix it. And I just, and I was just like, oh, once he, he and I felt the air kick on and I was just like, okay. And then I think it's totally okay to praise Jesus for the little things, the big things. I mean, yes, yes. Yes and amen. Thank you, Jesus, for giving whoever it was the idea of air conditioning. We love you. <laughs> and, I, and I mean that. We love you, Jesus. I, I was just like, I can sleep. My husband can sleep. He can go to work. He has so much on him right now. And I was just like, no, like he had, like the guy has to come. You know, we had to pay a little extra money for him to come at night because it was after hours when it, like, once I went live with you guys and I'm putting my hair up going, it's getting hotter and hotter in the basement. And it's never hot in my basement. And I was just like, uh-oh. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> Bad news. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm I'm all about praising Jesus. But my hair is like all wild. Because, you yeah, know, when it's humidity in the house. Because it takes a long time for my little 1954 house. That has like no insulation. I don't yet have the money for insulation. Post flood last year, like not yet, <laughs> not yet. Um, but yeah, so I I'm just all about praising Jesus for all the little things, being grateful for all the little things. We can always find things to be grateful for each and every day. I was proud of myself for my response. I shouldn't say that. Like, I had pride in myself. I don't mean it like that. But, you know, I'm always working on transforming the way that I talk, the way that I react to situations. And, you know, especially since Sunday, my reaction, my words, my behavior was not in line with transformation and change in Jesus Christ. Like, you know, half the people, if they had seen me, would have been like, her faith's not very much. I don't even think she has mustard seed faith uh, on Sunday. So that was really disappointing. I was super disappointed in myself. And that was a really hard thing to grapple with is when I'm disappointed in in my faith and my faith reaction to things and my behavior because I want my behavior to be in line with um, with my growing faith. I want my faith to be growing and not stagnating. I've already been in that place where I allowed my faith to not only stagnate but go um, backwards. And, you know, I really super became somebody I'm not proud to be, right? And so it was, it was, I, I really had to grapple hard with, you know, just trying not to be like so upset with myself that you know you start spiraling I don't know about you guys but <clears throat> and if you've been with me for I know I have a lot of new people because I I ran an ad campaign about my um <clears throat> my e-devotional and my meditation group so there's a lot of new people on um but I've always been very real about my past struggles with depression and anxiety and um you know, sense of worth and, you know, spiritual journey. And I feel very strongly that as I grow, that I keep bearing the fruit of that growth. And I don't want to see myself, you know, backslide or stumble. But there is times where we stumble and we can learn and it can catapult us to bigger growth, right? So I posted you know, yesterday, that if we're going to stumble, let's roll and get back up into God's arms, right? Put the Christian music on, praise and worship, you know, repent and spring forward, right? Get that momentum back. And I really believe that every single thing that we grapple with 
can be a springboard. We can allow it to be a springboard. You know, the devil, the enemy seeks to make it a stumbling block, seeks to make it a wall for us to bounce up against and say, oh, I just give up. And we can use it to catapult us into a stronger faith, into a bigger growth. And the way you do that is you rebuke the fear, you rebuke the anxiety, you rebuke the, you know, pity party, like, you know, rebuke the the feelings of massive guilt. Because, you know, Jesus doesn't want, like, you'd be like, oh, God, I'm so, so sorry. Like, you know, and just absolutely, like, tearing yourself apart. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't cultivate a relationship. That doesn't cultivate faith, right? Yes, he absolutely wants us to be broken and say, I, I repent. Like, I see, I see the error of my ways. I see that I need transformation and change. I see that I need wisdom in this area and guidance and build me up and grow me and make me mature. But, you know, tearing ourselves down to the point where, you know, we're no good and it schisms our relationship, that's from the enemy, right? But I have to grapple with that. I don't know about you guys, but I have to grapple with, you know, keeping that from happening. And, you know, it, it's gotten easier through the years, especially since I have a lot of tools in place and a lot of systems in place to keep those things from happening, right? And so I just want to encourage you guys that, you know, when those days come, <clears throat> because all of us have them, because God is, you know, the author and perfecter of our faith, and he will allow us to experience things we don't want to go through, right? <laughs> he will allow us to see our spiritual growth and maturity, or lack thereof. <laughs> he will, you know, and we have the capability of, you know, using everything that we experience to grow us to grow our journey, um, you know, by analyzing it, by being, you know, someone who says, you know, where did I go wrong? What did, what did I do? Where is my responsibility in this? And what could I have said differently? What could I have done differently? I say that to my kids all the time. How can we say this differently? All right, that's your first reaction is the words that you've already used, which is very worldly, right? Very worldly. Is our first reaction typically is a very worldly reaction. And I have gotten to the point where I used to be and still grapple with being impetuous and being very snap about things. And so I have worked to try and intentionally slow myself down and not always say the first thing that springs to my mind because the first thing that springs to my mind is from a worldly point of view, right? It comes from a place of how I was raised in a very broken environment, right? So maturity, spiritual maturity, and, you know, wellspring of good words from the heart that God has worked on takes intentional work, right? We have to pause the worldly part of us and we have to allow the Holy Spirit to be the one that speaks. And I think that, you know, it's okay to say, the words that I just used were wrong. That's the worldly way of saying it. That's not the way I should say it as a Christ follower. I think that's okay, right? I think it's okay to verbalize that. And a lot of people don't want to be wrong or be seen as making a mistake. But we can own our mistakes. We can own the words that have come out of our mouths, you know. And we can say, that's not what I should say as a Christ follower. I think that has more value to it, right? That has far more value. Because then we can recognize what, you know, the differences and the person we're talking to can see, oh, okay, 
you know, I never really did like those Christian people. And, hmm, you know, let me give that a second thought because she's showing me that there are two different ways of being, right? You know, we're, we are worldly until we accept Christ. And we're still worldly until Christ transforms our heart, mind, and the words that come out of our mouth. And that takes a lifetime. A lifetime, bit by bit, bit, uh, bit by bit, transforming the words that come out of our mouth, right? Right? And, you know, transforming our mindset and working on our mindset. That's what God always is trying to work on, is what is our mindset? How are we seeing the world? Are we seeing the world through worldly eyes or the eyes blessed by God? And then it changes the scenario completely. Right? You look at a crisis situation from a standpoint of faith and a standpoint of trust in God. And suddenly that situation takes on a very, very different light. It has a very different feel inside of ourselves. You know, we, we, can, we can cultivate the frenetic, worried, anxious overwhelming feeling of things or we can cultivate a sense of calm a sense of I'm giving it to God but I'm going to act as I believe he wants me to act now and the rest I'm giving into his hands that my friends is spiritual maturity that is where I'm working and working hard right and last night I, I said to my husband I am not freaking out I am not going to have a meltdown. I am not going to cry. I'm not going to get upset. I said, I'm going to stand here and pray. And that's what I did. I stood there and prayed. But I was like, mm, nope, I'm not going to be like I was. And I'm, you know, very ashamed of the way I was the, on Sunday night. I was like, nope, this is the behavior that I want. This is the behavior of a mature Christian. And I prayed. I told the guy, thank you so much for coming to my house. I, I, We prayed for him for safe travels, blessing over his life. He was like, ah, I'm not worried about it. I get overtime. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I know. <laughs> I was like, just say thank you. <laughs> Don't remind me. so grateful for him he did he found it quickly and it was a huge blessing and um and I just <sighs> so anyway I digressed quite a bit but you know what it pretty much goes with what we're going to talk about today so I'm reading now in Mark <laughs> You guys, if you've been following me for a while, I have been reading my way back through the entire Bible, plucking out little tidbits of, of, of uh, spiritual nuggets for us. And I thought about, um, oh, sh sorry guys, <sighs> my mind just... Okay, so the this man comes to Jesus in Mark, and he said, uh, good teacher, knelt before him, good teacher, what do I have to do to um, inherit uh, eternal life, right? And he's, you know, very interesting because he's, if you have read this part of the Bible, this man is extremely rich. He has a lot of things okay and so he's before um jesus and he's saying that i've done all the things hmm sounds like me i've done all the things <laughs> you can do as many good things as you want but you're not getting into heaven on things you're getting in on faith in christ only and you know, he says, uh, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. I said that to someone one time there, you know, I was like, well, no one's, no one's good. I'm not good. 
you're not good. And she's like, oh, that's harsh. I'm like, but we're not. <laughs> if there's no one here who has ever lied in their entire life, you need to DM me and PM me. <laughs> but no, there's no not one that is good. I, and lots of people say, I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven. Mm, do not. Sorry. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. <laughs> You're quantifying behavior. You can't quantify sin. One sin is the same as another. It schisms us away from God, right? He said, uh, you know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. Really? Have you really? Hmm. Right? And looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him and said, one thing you let go and sell all you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And right before that, in Mark chapter 9, Jesus was talking about cutting off anything that hinders you from the kingdom of heaven. Anything that causes you to stumble. Anything. Right? Anything that holds you back from, from growing in your spiritual journey. Now, you might be a little surprised, but <clears throat> I there's nothing absolutely zero, nothing wrong with, with wealth. There is nothing wrong with the millionaire or the billionaire or the hundred thousand air. <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> or the person down the street with thousands of dollars stuffed under their mattress um, if they have faith in Christ. There's absolutely nothing wrong with wealth. Nothing. In our in our society, especially in American culture, we have a huge problem in our churches. Um, demonizing wealth. And we do. And I'm not going to go into a huge thing about that. So if you're like, oh my gosh, she's one of those, you know, like pray and you'll, you'll be magically wealthy and rich. That's not where I'm coming from. Not at all. Okay. Um, but there is nothing wrong with wealthy people. Mm -mm. If they have faith in Jesus. You just see my caveat right there? There's my caveat. Their heart has to be right. It says those that bless others will be blessed. Those that are generous, God gives to generously. It says, you know, tithe, bring to me and see if I will not give to you above your needs. Okay? Okay. Lots of scripture about wealth. And if you want a really good biblical book about wealth and money and all that, just DM me or PM me and we can chat. I don't want to go into that. Really, what this is telling me and what I want you guys to encourage you to think about or reach out to your pastor about, here's the word that I thought was so interesting. Sell all you possess. Like that word, possess. Like it was his, like he possessed it. Like, you know, it's from that movie where the, the Gollum thing was like, it's my precious, it's mine, right? And he's looking and he's saying, like, this is mine. This is my possession, right? But not in a healthy way, not in a this is precious. This is to be respected because it's a gift from God and this is God's. All that I have is God right it wasn't I think that we need to think about that is that where this guy was coming from I think you know of course Christ looks at us and he knows exactly what's going on in our heart and mind exactly hey friend and I'm thinking to myself right to him it was a possession it was something he owned and it was his right and not in a good way but like mine and no one else can have it right you ever had a toddler that was like, mine, mm, you can have it, mine, 
right? That was, in my mind, his mindset. And I've heard sermons on this. And, you know, and so, like, I want us to think about that. Like, think about what is, like, in your life that is a mind thing, right? Not a mind to bless others with. God has given me this precious gift. God has given me this beautiful home to share with others, which y'all, I'm Southern and I love to host. It's like a love tank thing. Like you come, I feed you, it makes me happy. <laughs> but that's the thing, like I love to bless other people, right? So seeds, God says that, you know, we, we should sow seeds into the that which he has called us to right and and jesus was really like it was a sharp contrast that this guy needed right all all that he possessed makes me wonder what 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 does what would jesus say is all that this guy possessed right the possessions that he, that this guy hoarded so carefully to himself, right? And Jesus wasn't poor, FYI. He wasn't poor, which I heard from my Christian coach. I love this talk that she said. She's like, if Judas could steal out of the money, because he was in charge of the money, in charge of giving money to the poor, and if he could steal con consistently and no one noticed... Yeah, Jesus wasn't poor. Yeah. So, yeah. So, he was telling this guy, go sell everything you possess, give it to the poor, and come follow me. He wasn't telling him, FYI, be destitute. Like, okay, fine. Jesus didn't really have, like, a house. But everywhere he went, people were like, please come here to my house, stay in my house, bless me, and heal all my people, and let me feed you. Right? Right? So, and his clothes were nice. There was whole lots of things. Anyway, I digress. So I really think that what Christ was really telling him and what this guy really, he, you know, he just couldn't hear. He couldn't hear. Like, that's what I'm thinking. I just wonder. Don't you wonder what happened to him? Like, there are so many people in the Bible. I'm like, what happened to them in their life? Like, they were there, this little blip in these pages. Anyway, so I just want us to think about what is it that is so, like, you know, clutched fist, I possess it, that might be blocking us from our spiritual journey that we need to cut off, give away, sell, whatever it is. And y'all know that really what I'm talking about is mentalities. You know that's what I'm talking about, okay? Because what is it, the mentality that we need to cut off, you know, give away that's blocking us from our spiritual journey, right? What mindset do we need to change? And that we need to ask the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will just lay that out, right? But you got to actually get quiet and get away and, and talk and listen, which is hard even for me. <laughs> it is, I'm going to be honest right? But I think that's what we need. What is it that, that I possess that's keeping me, right? What is it that I possess? Is it, is it, do I possess a mindset that if I'm blessed, somebody else can't receive blessings? Is it a mindset that I can't change something? Because I hear people all the time, well, I'm just not going to change, you know? So it's just, you need to either like me or not like me. Yeah, you can change. You certainly can. You can make a choice. Now, there are certain things about my personality that I'm not going to change, and that's okay. Unless the Holy Spirit tells me to. Or not. All 100% going to like each other, right? And that's okay. That's okay, right? We can find those that we click with. Right? That's why there are billions of people with billions of different personalities. God has blessed us with different personalities and pursuits and desires and 
and we click with people in a certain way but yes we have the capacity to change the way we react to people yes we have the capacity to change whether or not we're jealous of other people yes we have the capacity to transform our thought process if somebody else is blessed that doesn't mean that there's no blessing for me it doesn't it means there is no lack in the kingdom of god none God can multiply blessings and still have more left over like we were talking about in yesterday's Bible study, right? You know, Jesus had baskets and baskets full of loaves and fish. Twelve the first time, seven the second time, and people were still go not trusting him. Right? We wonder why it's so difficult today. I used to think, well, if I had been around and actually seen Jesus at the time, I would have zero issue trusting him and following him. Dude, there's so many people that were watching everything he did and they still had a problem trusting him and following him and used the word, if you can. And he was like, if I can. Did you just talk to God like that? Right? <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to watch yesterday's episode, uh, Bible study. Lots of fun there. Lots of fun thinking about that. But <clears throat> I want to encourage us. Take the time. Kneel before God. Talk to the Holy Spirit. What is it that, that we need to cut off, give away, so that our spiritual journey can grow and change, so that we can have that cultivated, beautiful, mature relationship with God? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love and mercy. Lord, thank you that you are so forgiving and loving. You are slow to anger, compassionate. You have compassion over every single human being that is your child. You call us sister and brother. And that just blows me away. Your majesty, your love, your mercy, your desire to see us grow to, to what you know we can be. You know that we can be something wonderful for your kingdom agenda. Lord God, help us to quiet our minds in our space and ask, what is it that I need to cut off? transform, give away, change, so that we can grow, be your hands and feet, shine your light wherever we go. You're so holy and wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being patient with me for bit by bit working on my heart, working with this precious person. Lord God, I pray for whatever issue they're struggling with or need help with, Lord God, I pray abundant blessings on them. Pray for transformation and change. Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves for your transformation and change. Show us where we need to grow. Show us where we need to cultivate faith. Please show us where we need to change our words. Show us where we need to change our mindset so that we can produce the hundredfold fruitful harvest. So that others will look at us and glorify you, Adonai. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, hit subscribe, like, follow. <laughs> it's like YouTube, subscribe, Instagram. I love it. I love all the things. I just love sharing life with y'all. So I love the Instagram, the YouTube. The Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right, guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. I wish you abundant blessings. If you need special prayer, please do feel free to reach out. It is my honor to be able to intercede on your behalf.